Good evening, everyone. We are back. We are back with our gate, the gate of envy. This Torah class is dedicated. Baruch Hashem, I want you to show to see uh, people sitting on stairs. I'm telling you, people sitting on the couches. There's no more room in the Medina's house. We should give them a blessing to move in their roof to a bigger house. Bezrat Hashem. Amen, amen. Toda Raba. You were trying to get rid of me or what? <laughs> This Torah class is dedicated to uh, Varda Batsara and Refua Shalema, speedy recovery to all the names, uh, the names that you mentioned. Ronin Ben Ahuva, Mazash Rotom Shua Salama. Tov, Mother Abutai, everybody. We've learned about jealousy, about envy, about that the people won't get envy, won't get you anywhere. Except you being angry, upset, that you can't reach what your friends has, can have what your neighbor have, and this is all start because you have a bad eye, you have an evil eye, because you 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 you, you lost other people' belongings. Why don't you mind your own business and be happy with what you have? Because when you envy at someone else's stuff, even what you have, you're going to lose. Because God says, hey, you're not, he's not happy what he has. I have to take it from him. I'll take it. He doesn't like it. I'll take it from him. Now you understand why you people losing in their life a lot of money and their job and their wife, and other things. Because he is he's never happy. He's always look outside. He's always hungry for something new. Yeah, but what about the motivation? That you have to motivate, or like... You see motivation somebody? is good. If he comes out of pure motivation, to bring more, um, I don't know, um, livelihood to the house, in order to support your family, and get a bigger house or a bigger car because you really need it. This is fine. It's perfectly fine. You should make the efforts and God will give you blessing. But if you only make these efforts because your friend has a Lexus 2018 and you have only 2017. <laughs> <laughs> what are you really doing this? Because you're jealous. It's called Homed, lost, L-U-S-T. Okay, so that's what we learned last time. Okay, now there's a parable, a fable. The fable talks about the desirer and envier. Homed veqanai. Go ahead. A parable. A king once met a desirer and an envier walking together on the road and said to them, Let one of you ask for something and it will be given him, and the other will get twice as much. The envier did not want to ask first, envying his friend a double portion, and the desirer desired the double portion. Finally, the desirer pressed the envier to ask first, whereupon he asked that they gouge out one of his eyes uh -huh. and both of his friend's eyes. Well, you see? So, this, you see how the envier envied his friend, so what he asked, take one eye, because he wants his friend to get double. A king, tell them, whatever you ask, I give you double. You can ask a million dollar. But, oh, wait, wait a minute. I get a million, my friend is going to get two million. Eh? No, 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 no. I'm going to ask a boat. No, no, boat, no, boat. He's going to get two boats. A big hat? No, a big hat. You know what? Take one of my eyes. Why? <laughs> because he wants eyes. his friend two eyes. <laughs> eh? <laughs> What's the idea here is that the envier is losing. Right. He's suffering. And he's willing to suffer just for the sake of make his friends suffer. So he won't have what he has. If you have jealousy, this is the first sign that you be not be not a great believer. The more you have jealousy in you, it means you less believe in Hashem. And I said again, you are not a true believer. If you believe in God, why to envy someone else's uh, belongings, stuff? 
Hashem runs the world. He knows whom to give. Be satisfied. Be satisfied. Be happy with what you have. Okay. Continue. How many evils proceed from envy? The primal serpent envied Adam and brought death to the world. Right. It's called Nahash HaKadmoni, the primal serpent. He envied. You know, according to the Kabbalah, I don't know if you ever learned that, the original snake, serpent, it looks different than the serpent we have today. They even have legs and hands. Some scientists, by the way, found an evidence in the snake's serpent skull that they call it millions of years or billions of years back, it used to have legs and hands. And it says, as the Midrash says, that when he was punished, Malachim came down and they chopped his hand and legs, and his voice was sound from, I mean, miles away of pain. Wow. And Hashem told them, now you're going to have food, eat wherever you go. You're not going to feel the taste. You see, the, 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 the snake is not really chewing. Right. Swallowing right. and the body digest. digested, right? So it doesn't feel the taste, it doesn't feel the good, the, the pleasure. In one hand, it sounds a great blessing, it's not a curse. Which means that, yes, later, and uh, because everywhere he goes, you find food. Mm-hmm. So, what's the problem? It's kind of like I tell you uh, an example, give an example. There is two sons. King has two sons. They are both live far away. One of them, the king give him every year check, a big check to support him the entire year. Can pay rent, gas, insurance, food, celebrate everything he wants, he's covered. The other guy has to come every every week and ask for money. And then every Sunday, the king gave him a check, a small check. Which one is greater? Which one is more blessed? The first or the second? The second, second, Oscar says. Why the second? Because it's five years a year every week. Very good. Good. (laughs) He thinks. Listen to this. Because the first one, the king wants to get rid of. He doesn't like him. Just take it. I'll see you next year. Bye bye. But the other son, he loves him. He wants to see him at least at the end of every week. So you make him come every every week. Kind of like with us, the Jewish people. Hashem, you say, want something? Come every morning to the Beth Knesset, to the synagogue. Every morning, ask. Not once a year. In some Beth Knesset, people come, you can see. People once a year, Yom Kippur. At the end of Yom Kippur, Shalom, everybody. See you next year. That's it. This is all what Hashem says about the same thing. And once a year. That's what you see now. So, someone that Hashem likes to speak with, to talk, to listen to, is someone that has to come to synagogue every day. So Hashem likes to see you. I want to hear your voice. The blessing. The Birkat Amazon. The Shabbat. Okay. Continue. The primal ser- serpent envied Adam and brought death to the world, and it was decreed upon him in Bereshit 3.14. You shall walk upon your stomach, and you shall eat dust. See also what happened to Cain, Korah, Bilam, Doeg, Ahitophel, Gehazi, Adonai, Avshalom, and Yuziahu, who desired what was not theirs. Not only did they not gain what they desired, but they lost what they possessed. Ah, the love what they possessed. Okay, we learn from that. Go ahead. All of this should teach one to separate himself from envy and desire. Let him reflect if even what he has is not his, for on the morrow it may be gone. Then what avails him that is not his, concerning that is written in Mishlei 27.1, for you do not know what the day will bring. What does that mean? Nobody knows. What's going to be tomorrow? In an hour from now, a minute from now. Right. You know what? Ten seconds from now. 
I was the other day at LA Fitness playing racquetball. A big guy came, really big guy. I never saw him in my life. I think I told you that. And I came to the court to play. Nobody showed up. I don't know why. And he came, he playing one court, you know, warm up. I don't know, warm up. And then we came out at the same time and we started to talk. Very nice person. His name was Randy. And a big guy. You want to play? You want to play? Okay, let's play. This guy is a big guy, but he's uh, reaching the ball. He's uh, making me run. He's running. I'm running. After one game, you want to do one more? I ask him. Said, no, no, I'm good. But in a few weeks, let me warm up. Let me do some exercise. I'm going to beat you. He says to me, okay. He's sitting on the bench. I am like a few feet away from him. And he's drinking. He's telling me about his business. He's working with his brother in another country, in another state, in charge over a golf club. Very nice person. Nicest in the world. All of a sudden, he takes the word and then he goes, whoa, that's what I remember from him, whoa. And then this guy fell, boom, like a sack of potato. And I tried to do CPR, I'm sorry, CPR. And, 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 and the, I tell them, go call ambulance. And the ambulance came, came, this guy died. He just passed away right on the spot. I didn't know that he died because he was still a little bit drinking. He had the gum in his mouth. I had to open his mouth to take the gum out. We're doing some CPR. And ambulance took him. I think he was still breathing. We threw the machine. So I took a shower. I went to the hospital. I went there. Who are you? Your friends. I just met him today. What's going on? And then she said to me, What happened? They can't say. Maybe the doctor didn't show up yet to determine that. Sorry. I saw him there, you know, I felt so bad. And I was thinking, look, this guy has plans to come back, to show me how he can play. He has family. Just out of the blue sky. He has a lot of plans. When he came that day, he didn't have plans that he's going to die. He's going to come back home. You know how many people live in the morning? Honey, I see you for dinner. They never make it. Are we unlucky? We are lucky that at the end of the day we are home. Do we say Hashem to Daraba? I say thank you. I don't think so. You should wake up. People jealousing other you can you can jealous at your own brother, your own sister. This is against Hashem's will. I will I will, I will finish maybe with uh, a story that happens in the time of uh, King Solomon. It was merchants went together, came to Shabbat in a place they want to hide their, their money. So those days they didn't have safes. What if they have, they used to deposit it with the hotel owner. Some didn't trust, so they decide they're going to hide the, the, the money underground. Many people do it, and even till, till today. So they dig, they put the money, the business, and there's some diamonds and money. Right? And they decide that after Shabbat is over, they're going to pick it up. After Shabbat, they go, it's gone. Now they suspect each other. Who knew? Only three of us. Everybody does. Me, you suspected me. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's me. Right, you. you saw me. I was with you all day. They don't know what to do. Everybody playing the innocent. Maybe it's not them. Who saw them? Okay. They go to King Solomon. They were in Yerushalayim. They make an appointment. They told King Solomon what happened. And King Solomon told them, you know what? I need to think about it. Come to me in the morning. What time? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. They came eight o'clock in the morning. And King Solomon told them, oh, I'm glad that you're here. I'll be right with you. You know what? Let me ask you something. All three of you. I'm, I'm dealing now with the case of uh, 
Very interesting case. What's the case? The case is the following. A young man and woman, many, many years ago, were good friends. And they decided when they, they grow up, they'll get married. So they make promises and vows to each other and all you know, that. And they grow up. Okay, so the lady, you know, after her 20s or something, she forgot about the young man. And she engaged to someone else. After the engagement, she says, oh, I forgot. Years ago, I made a promise for a guy, or a guy from my village. The nicest guys ever. I don't know what to do now. Yeah. So her fiance says, you know what? I'm going to take some of money, a suitcase, and I'm going to ask for his forgiveness, <coughs> and we pay him to release you, and... It'll be okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, so they walk together at the village. She found his house. She knows the family. He see her and she apologized for what happened. And he's offering him the money. This guy says, no, no, don't worry about it. It's okay. What happened? And I engage. It's fine. And I'm not going to take the money. Has shalom. God forbid. Money is yours. Thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. You're so wonderful. On the way back, A robber cut, cut them. Give me the money. What's in the suitcase? Give me the money. <gasps> now, this is a lot of money. She's supposed to get married. She needs every cent. And she starts to plead him. And he said, please, you know, we went all the way from where we live to an old friend. And he was entitled to get the money. But he gave it up. But you, you, whatever, you don't. This is our money. You're not part of the story. Please let us go. And the robber told him, you know what? I'm in a good mood today. Get out of here. He let them go. They ran for their life. And King Solomon says, now I have a question for you. You tell me who is greater. Who should get the trophy, the medal, the top of his, on his shoulder? He is a mensch. The fiancé, but he was willing to give out of his money, his own money, to someone he doesn't know. Maybe he is the old friend that he was willing to let go, give up. Or maybe he's the robber. He had the gun, he could take it all. But he let them go. Who is greater? By the way, what do you think? One, two, or three, the robber. What do you think? Number one? Anyone? Number one? Only because your wife said you don't want to get in trouble. Okay, yeah, no, yeah, okay. Shalom bite. Shalom bite. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Nobody want to take a risk. Number two. No, Who is no. number two? Yeah. Is the old friend, right? Old friends. Who else? Okay. So the first merchant says, I think the one should get the trophy, the medal, the, 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 is, is, is the title mensch is number one. The fiance. Why? He was willing to give his own personal money. He took it seriously. He went all the way there. That's a good guy. Right. King Solomon says, okay. What do you think? And the second merchant who says, I think he's the old friend. He was supposed to get the money. If he wanted to let go the girl, it's one thing. But at least he can get the money. They offer him the money. Okay, I hear you. And you, number three? He says, well, I think it's uh, the robber. should get all the credit. He had the gun. He could take the money. King Solomon jumps and says, you are the thief. Mm -hmm. The one that thinks that the robber should get something that never was Belong offered to him or belongs to him, you don't care about, about other people's money. Mm -hmm. You care about yourself. When hearing that, he started crying. He admit that he is the one, he's the thief. He's not even his. And he went, we give up on what? He's a thief. That can come only from King Solomon. Wisdom. Well, how it started? <laughs> envy. He envied his friend's money. He took it. He got in trouble. I want to wish each and everyone here, on behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, that we always 
be happy with what Hashem gave us. And it's okay to ask from Hashem for more. More children, more parnasa, more joy, more tshuva, more happy, more money. Everything is good. If Hashem gives, toda, it's very good. And if He doesn't give, it's also toda, it's good. It's for a good reason. Darabha, on behalf of the Israel Foundation, I want to thank all the uh, Medina's family and everybody that helps uh, uh, and supports all of Israel Foundation. God bless you all. Have a great week. Thank you.